Welcome to the Millennial Mic. I'm Ali. I'm Joe. And, and this is the Millennial Mic. Content for us, by us. We'll okay. see. Hey, Joe. Hi, <laughs> How are you doing? I am great. How are I'm you? I'm so excited for wellness week. We, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to go ahead and introduce our wonderful guest for today, Dr. Bowen? Sure. Our guest today is Dr. Che Bowen, Trinidadian-born event manager and medical doctor who has actively sought to enhance the healthcare landscape in the Caribbean. Bridging the gap between healthcare and technology, Dr. Bowen is a CEO of MD Link, a telemedicine company <laughs> with a digital platform that helps to address the challenge of connecting with patients who are unable to reach their doctors on time and at the same time delivering a personalized service. In the wake of the global pandemic COVID-19, more than 10,000 patients and 150 doctors providing much-needed medical advice across Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, and Cayman Islands, among several other islands, have registered on the telehealth platform MD Link as they adhere to social distancing rules and safety measures during the coronavirus outbreak. Che ascribes to the philosophy, hasta la victoria siempre, which means until victory always. Che, thank you so much for joining us on the Millennial Mic. Woo woo! Welcome! Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Excited <laughs> to talk so with y'all. You. <laughs> so, Che, we always start off with some fun warm up questions before we get into the meat of the matter. So, we want to know. How do you unwind or what's your go-to relaxation activity? Okay, go-to relaxation activity. Um, that's a good one. I work a lot on and off the clock when I, but I try okay, to keep really? a, a balance. <laughs> I try, I need to find some sort of balance in my life. So I enjoy getting out of Kingston. I enjoy driving on the highway, actually. I find it very therapeutic, relaxing. Yeah. Um, I also play golf. I watch Netflix. I just try to totally shut off when I take my breaks. But right. those, like, those, are my, like those are the main it. things I do. I used to... Netflix, driving. I used to, I used to go to a lot of events. Golf. I used to have events. I used to... Mm, it was fun. <laughs> that sounds like a it's the enthusiast. Of like outside was one no. concept, but no, I'm inside. Outside. <laughs> outside was definitely how I would, you know, de-stress and recalibrate. But now you just gotta find everything else. Yeah. So Ooh, you, you know, you. if you were outside. Um, <laughs> what would or where is that your favorite place? That feels like a mean place? question to It's ask. not a mean what? Like, if you were outside, let me if dangle outside out in front <laughs> of you. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are rewinding to before March 2020. And if you back were in outside, outside days. Back in the outside days. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, what would be your, you know, favorite place to visit in the world? Favorite place to visit in the world um you say that like where would i want to be so where have i been that i'd like to visit again let's say both hmm. you gotta um, okay you i've actually two been two i've first, been so <laughs> <laughs> i've been to the middle east with a, a medical student friend of mine turns out he was an arab prince and he flew us up there for his wedding wow. house uh, a big crazy yeah. celebration <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you know, turns it, out. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was an insane experience actually um we got to understand the 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 nation from a different standpoint from a, yeah. a prince standpoint you know and we got the prince and the, the royalty treatment and the royalty as well so it was so you're exciting to go so a royal trip again. Definitely a royal trip to Dubai. Right. And Vegas, you know? <laughs> Anywhere That's in the world, as long as it's, it's a royal, royal trip. trip. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it. All right, we see you. We see you. All right. Oh, God. Back Indeed. to the outside ideas again. All right. It's Friday when night. Outside was Picture thing. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can get any meal that you want. What is it? 
any meal that I want, I'll go for Indian, actually. Okay. I like saffron. I, I like the garlic naan. Garlic, right, naan. garlic naan. Garlic naan. I actually like Who bus doesn't up like shot. garlic naan? I like Who bus doesn't up like shot, bus up shot? No, there's no bus up shot in Jamaica. For the international audience, could you outline it's exactly what, what is, is the bus up shot? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a gun. It's not violent. It's actually food. It's roti. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's such a so good description it's, it's, different type of oh, it's, it's food <laughs> the only thing that confronts one another is the chickpea and the okay I'm gonna stop it's, go ahead it's, it's almost <laughs> somewhat close to garlic naan so garlic naan and chicken tikka masala and uh, yeah I'm good to go oh, with we're that going, we're going back to your order okay so yeah. got it alright chicken tikka masala garlic naan simple what that's else? it that's, That's it. it. Right. And and what okay. would you be drinking? I would have to add some some fry up okra and some yeah fry up okra be, would have to add add to that order for me. I'd be drinking my my redoxon, you know, keep my vitamin C up, especially <laughs> <Wow>. the <times. laughs> What is <laughs> happening? <laughs> that was not the response I expected. At I mean, you know, uh, I messaged me the other day to ask what vitamins I was taking. Like, hi, um, as as a as a concerned medical professional, um, what please, vitamins are you taking? <laughs> please hydrate. Take your vitamins. You know? Even when eating Indian food on a casual yeah. Friday yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into the good stuff. Joe, you want to take this away? Yes. So actually on the topic of medicine, um, you know, in your bio, we would have identified that you are a medical practitioner. And the question, or rather, inquiring minds want to know, why medicine? Joe Marie you always know, talks does, about inquiring minds. Yeah, the inquiring minds <laughs> could, just, just, met be, all of could them. just be me and could just be Ali and I, but here we, we are. We are the inquiring minds. <laughs> so the inquiring minds want to know why medicine? And, you know, does medicine feel like your purpose? Did you pursue it because it was an obvious strength? You know, what is your medical journey story? Okay. Awesome question. Um, medicine, it came... It came from me in the sense that no one in my family is in the medical field. Like there are no other doctors. I don't know other Dr. Bowen. I'm sure there is probably, but I don't know any in my direct family. Um, yeah, it just came to me. There's actually nothing else I would have done. There's no other options in my mind. You know, I had a doctor's kit from I was about six years old. <laughs> Went straight into sciences. You know, I like biology. And it was straightforward. Um, yeah, straight, straightforward. I, I wasn't considering anything else. I didn't want to be engineer, lawyer. There's no managing. I liked, I liked creativity, but I was, I was raised by two professionals, so I was kind of, you know, focused on getting a career and moving forward. Um, and, and based on your the parental impact on the decision that you would have made to pursue medicine, would was your passion for it fostered? Was it was it was it um encouraged? I think the whole study of book career path was definitely encouraged because that's what they yeah. went through, that's what they know. So mm -hmm. um I did the same, but I found I found it to be my own in that they didn't do biology and chemistry and the sciences. They didn't know it like I did. So I had my own my own niche, my own profession that I loved. And yeah. growing up, I, I did love helping people. I did love, I do love reaching out. I do love being kind to people, you know, living good with persons in general. And I think that contributes to the only sort of career or profession I'd want to do in life. Okay. Yeah. Did medicine feel like a calling? I would say not really a calling. It's definitely something I wanted to do and worked hard towards doing. So I wouldn't say it's a calling or like some sort of natural gift. It's something I, I liked. I really appreciated. I wanted yeah. to do it and I worked hard towards becoming a doctor. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. That's, that's what I would yeah, say. That's, that's great. So, you know, MD Link has really gained popularity over the last couple of months, and rightfully so. So many people are trying to see a doctor or seek medical care um, virtually. And MD Link has stepped in to fill the gap between 
um, the services that we need and can access at home. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, that startup story, how MD Link came to be and, you know, why you decided to um, explore your entrepreneurial side? Because I believe yes. we all have one, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you on that when we all have an entrepreneurial side that desire to create. Um, that's what I link it to, creativity at least. Medicine does not necessarily allow you that ability to create and explore what you can do or what you're good at or great at. It's more about learning what has been researched and thought already. Um, so that being said, I have forgotten the question you asked me. I was asking you kind of how MD Link started up. So you're sharing right. a bit more about, yeah, that like medicine didn't really allow you the creativity. Yeah. And you so to try something new. Right out of medical school, I started exploring all sorts of different entrepreneurial parts. Um, first, I went into the hearse business. I had a Cadillac hearse and I was transporting. Again. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> then I went into event management. Yeah, I went. Yeah, event management. You know, I was having e events in school. We had the largest medal party ever. This was pre-COVID days, and course, it took off. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're staying safe, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so after med school. You know, we, we connected with some, some good event specialists or promoters, and we mm -hmm. put together some cool events, Cabana City, you know, BFD, and thus during the carnival week, pre-COVID, of course. And that in itself allowed me to build out a lot of networks, even in the corporate environment, because as an event management person, you have to have, you have to be reaching out to sponsors and stuff, and yeah. After that, I moved into, I was still in medicine, still seeing patients, and I kept thinking, you know, how can I merge my entrepreneurship desire with my profession? Yeah. And eventually, I came up with MD Link, Telehealth, See a Doctor Online. This was in yeah. 2017, and I was actually in the British Virgin Islands at the time. And I launched it in 2018 in Jamaica. Okay, so hold on. I want to just make sure our audience is tracking the progress of your the progress. journey. <laughs> so you, you, you graduate med school. Right. You throw this crazy party. You realize you're pretty good at events. Well, even before the party. Even there before would the have party, we got the hearse. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Is that right? Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. No. So, so you saw a gap that needed to be filled in the funeral services, hearse driving right. business. Then you thought this event could be better for the end of year party. Mm -hmm. Right. Then you realize your strengths for event planning got into the entertainment industry a bit. Right. And then you mm -hmm. really wanted to find a way to marry your, the strengths that you had developed in your entrepreneurial life and your passion for medicine. And that's how MD Link was born. 100%. Virtual medicine. See a doctor online. Yeah. Indeed. And... Uh, Thank of you. Course. Joy's like over here checking me. I'm She's like, like, yeah, I think that's this right. This is the origin <laughs> story. I'm like, of MD Link. all of a sudden, I'm now writing Chase Bio in my mind. I'm like, okay, let's track it together. Yeah. Okay, that, yeah. So, so now keep going on the MD Link story. That is the back story, right. So I think this is I mean, great too. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. This is horrible. <laughs> uh, I think it's great too because so much, so many members of our audience, I think, um, are as Joe Marie likes to say multi-potentialites mm -hmm. and have a variety of interests and the way that you've married yours I think really helps to provide a roadmap um, to people listening so thank you for sharing all of this no problem and I promise I won't interrupt you <laughs> <laughs> if I were to take it back a little bit further I'd actually say there were some more contributing factors to this whole telehealth thing popping up in my head um, I was working at the Kingston Public Hospital after med school. This was somewhere during my hearse, hearse um, company, my hearse business on the side. And I was seeing patients in the clinic and it was crazy. At Kingston Public Hospital is just 
work, 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 it's non-stop, it's hard, it's probably one of the hardest years of my medical career, definitely, actually, and there was this patient, you know, he came in and he said, Doc, why do I have to keep coming to clinic for you to, you know, write the same blood pressure medication for me again and again and again and again? It takes $15,000 to reach it from Portland. I'm like, 15000 wow. How? How? Um, I mean, I did the math and I realized, you know, he, he, he chartered transport. You know, that's, that's right. how it ended up at 15000 But I was like, oh, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. And there must be a better way. Um, so I kept thinking and thinking and thinking. And that's how I eventually stumbled upon, you know, why not just, why not just, video chat with them why not text them or, or give them a call check up with them ask them to review their blood pressure they already know yeah. they've had this condition for so long you know they understand how to check their blood pressure and uh, yeah I, I went online and i saw that it was already being done in first world of course it had not nice. taken off yet definitely not in not even in first world not in the caribbean region there was no trace of it of a platform of that sort in the region. So I said, all right, perfect opportunity, let me go for it. And uh, that is indeed how MDLink started. Mm. Yeah. So essentially you are trying to ask, you are trying to solve two problems, you know, the social need for medical care as well as the logistics aspect connected for persons who would have had to travel from far distances in order to get this medical care, you still wanted to offer that that customer service and that touch of professionalism without them having to incur these costs. Correct. So it was a win-win situation for, for everyone. That's how I saw it. You know, more affordable access to healthcare and more instant access to healthcare. They'd be able to save on, on money, on transport, on even doctor's fees. You know, it'd be a win-win from every perspective. Yeah, and, you know, with that in mind, and when you think of MD Link in the context of, you know, the times we're living now, what really has been your experience from 2017 when there was a bit of skepticism to know where the need is so prominent and evident? Walk us through what has been your experience since the pandemic with MD Link. Okay, yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, when I launched in 2017, um, I, a lot, a big part of me was like, wow, wow, Che, what, what are your colleagues going to think? They're going to think you're crazy. You, you want to start seeing patients online. They're not even going to accept it, but I knew that it would work. I knew that it was a, a, a problem being solved. I knew it would be helpful to a lot of institutions. So I kept pushing forward with it. Um, from the patient side, I think I, I thought the patients would be more responsive to it because a lot of patients they have been messaging me and and I messaged them back and I could help them out without them coming into office, you know, for simple conditions, for a lot of the simple conditions, you know, and that's how I kept pushing forward, pushing forward, and at first it was it was it was somewhat scary for me to approach a doctor and say, hey. You, you want to see some patients on the internet? Yeah. You know? right. <laughs> I can't imagine that went over when like, hey, um, wanna like, what internet? was, that can, you, can you remember <laughs> any of those conversations where when you said it, your, the response was just like, Che, I, I, I don't know what you're asking me right now. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. I mean, I had to depend on my friends. So that was definitely a good a benefit of actually being a doctor i had to depend on my friends to be like can you support me can you you know can you just see a few patients see how it works give me some feedback and one of my friends dr henry he's a gynecologist a close friend of mine and he was my first gynecologist on the platform and you know he helped me out and you know that's not one of our top specialists gynecology that's that's now one of the the top reasons person come onto the platform right for vaginal infections or for pregnancy guidance even and uh, yeah so when covid hit it was so much more easier everyone was convinced you know america was saying telemedicine everyone was like wow this thing is real it's a real concept you can't you can't actually see your doctor 
online. You can see your patients online and it's acceptable. And from that, you know, we, we moved from 15 doctors from me asking my friends and even having my friends, you know, they're trying to help, but I could tell, you know, in the back of their minds, they're like, wow, Dr. Bowen has gone crazy. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like we're here with you, Che, but we're not here with you, Che. <laughs> it's like if this goes awry, yeah, yeah you're gonna have to yeah. check us back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then in March we went from fifteen to twenty doctors. We went straight up to a hundred and fifty within the first week of the virus landing wow. in wow. in Jamaica, and then. 250 by the next month and then it slowed down a bit we're now at 350 doctors on the platform mm -hmm. yeah so you started with how many you started with 15, 15. then moved 15. to 20 then moved to 250 and now currently at 350 and the interesting wow. thing is that given the growth in terms of you know the uptake and and really persons um being a part of it, it really goes to show the importance of ideas and timing and context. Because I was actually curious about, you know, given the context of the business, if from a, you know, legislative or best practice standpoint, if you experienced any friction in relation to that, like it being contrary, you know, you know, you know, similarly in, in professions like medicine and law, there are certain guidelines for things in terms of best practices and things that you can or cannot do. Did you experience any friction like that? Or is it the kind of thing that is so progressive that there's really no law or best practice that would have prevented you from doing it? Correct. So the program definitely wasn't ready for something like this. Therefore, no regulations were in place for telemedicine per se in the entire region, so I'm sort of setting the bar, setting the standards. I do try to follow, I do follow first world guidelines, first world protocols, even in terms of security, we have, you know, HIPAA compliance, and that's more or less the, the state of the art security for your, for your personal records or for your medical records that you should have on your telemedicine platform. You know, you shouldn't be using WhatsApp or Skype or those other not not so medically secure platforms or medically approved platforms right. um, to do telemedicine. And, you know, again, to answer your question, no, there weren't any regulations in place. I suspect over the next few years, regulations will have to be put in place. But MD-Link kind of keeps in line with U.S. regulations or first world regulations. Indeed. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. So, Che, what would you say is your biggest challenge right now, either professionally or personally, um, that you think is maybe a challenge that lots of other people face? And um, how, are you, how are you navigating that? Um, professionally, what is the... I, I, would, I would tie it back to MD Link in terms of just, you know, penetrating the entire health ecosystem with telemedicine mm -hmm. personally it would be transitioning i still feel like i'm in the transitioning phase of uh, you know i i personally feel like you can only be or you should only be one or the other it's hard when you find that merge you have to kind of focus more on one side. Are you going to focus more on the doctor side or are you going to focus more on the CEO side? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And that it's a, in it's itself, a juggle. it's a larger juggle than people can imagine, you know? Right. Yeah. From a mental, emotional standpoint. So even. if, so in terms of tracking what you do now, so if you're walking through, a typical day in your life and that juggle being such a core part of it like how do you find the time to be che while still navigating that transitional period because you got to work full-time right and then you mm -hmm. come home and work full-time yeah <laughs> yeah so it's full-time yeah. full -time. Full -time to full-time it's 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 the nine to five and then the five until it kind of energy yeah but yeah, yeah so yeah. 
I definitely feel like I need to figure that part out pretty soon. Um, and I'm not in control of the nine to five because I actually work for the, the Ministry of Health. Right. So in terms of making that transition, do you crave control or do you crave certainty or both? Um, I'd say I, I crave control at this point. Okay. Yeah, I kind of want to be 100% in charge of me and what I do and the directions I take at this point in life. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, Che, we, we ask, um, you know, these questions um, to everybody. But I think in 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 medicine, it's really interesting to talk about mentorship, and because you because you have doctors who mentor you throughout your whole medical career, right? You're Correct. you're an intern, um, but do you have a business mentor? Do you have um, you know a peer mentor or a medical mentor that you really rely on for support? And is that something that you would recommend to people um, to seek out, especially people engaging in careers like yours? Yeah, definitely. When you're trudging in a direction that, you know, it's not something you've been brought up on. Like for me, it would be medicine and all of a sudden I'm into business and I want to do really well at it. Definitely, it would help to have a mentor, to have someone guiding you, telling you, no, you shouldn't sign that document or no, you shouldn't look in that direction. You're wasting too much time. You should yeah. definitely be focusing in this direction. Just these three steps and you'll be out of it instead of these 16 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have been lucky in that I have gained a lot of uh, mentors. I, I would say, again, for my networking when I was in event management and or still am, maybe in the future, depending on COVID. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah, I was lucky to gain a lot of mentors. I have a, a, a variety of mentors. I have uh, a medical CEO mentor, Dr. Michael Banbury. I have a, on, a medical entrepreneur mentor, my close friend, Dr. Kevin Henry. I got a mentor from the Development Bank of Jamaica. That's Mr. Paul Williams. He's actually out of Aetna Insurance, a big insurance company in in the US and he's guiding me step by step, you know, what moves to make in terms of telemedicine and insurance and how to take it through the region. So I appreciate that from the Development Bank of Jamaica. Um, in terms of, uh, so he, he guides me from a business standpoint as well. Right. And um, yeah. And uh, who else would I say has mentored me? Those would be, my main mentors. Yeah. When you think of... And my mother. Does that count? Of course that of counts. Of course that counts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So have you found that, you know, in terms of the mentors that you have been given or the mentors that have come into your life and played such a pivotal role, have you found that peer mentorship has been helpful for you? Peer members, peer, <laughs> peer <laughs> mentorship. Yeah. yeah, like from other yeah. doctors or other or, you know, entrepreneurs. Yeah, because the thing is, um, Ali would have alluded to it earlier in terms of you're such a multifaceted individual that I can't imagine that mentorship is like a very uniform thing for you because you have so many different parts of you that would need to be watered and nurtured. So in your event um experience in your entrepreneurship experience in your medical experience like have you found that persons being in the same space as you or the same you know with other doctors or other entrepreneurs or other um event practitioners like has that helped you you would have touched on the doctors for sure um and the entrepreneurship side as well so i guess the more directed question as have you found peer mentorship helping you in the event space um, event space, peer mentorship. Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. So if you think back to when you were doing that first med law event right. and you would have no, like undoubtedly would have asked, you know, you'd have done this with friends or you'd have done this with a group of people. Like, did you find that 
being in the space where you where you and the group of persons were figuring things out that persons who might have known more than you or were pretty much in the same line with you would have helped you to develop your um your event expertise correct definitely that's that's actually what happened a hundred percent i mean we had our event back in med school the med law party and it took off and you know some some other event promoters event managers they saw the potential and they reached out to us and we had a good chemistry that's actually mr dean shepherd he's now the ceo of blueprint and starlight actually they merged and mr philip palmer they they came together and they worked with us including dr kevin henry all four of us and we put together a lot of successful events and they were able to guide us in terms of you know from reaching out getting proposals getting sponsors and just logistics and you know just the fact that they had more experience and years in the industry it was able to assist us in in, in moving forward as quickly as possible right mm -hmm. so with that in mind and still in keeping with the very multifaceted nature of who you are che um what's your favorite resource you know what's the thing that is feeding you both intellectually personally otherwise it could be a website it could be a book um it could be something that is really feeding you now so it's not it's not something that has to be from a long time but maybe you know what is your favorite resource now it's actually twitter i go on twitter and i look at ali and joe's tweets and <laughs> they really motivate me they uh, give me the energy I need to get Jory through the has really I, motivating tweets. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> She's like, gentle reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> Outside of that, you know, I... It's just that. A closer. <laughs> <laughs> there are 10 other open ones. <laughs> I'm like, okay, don't worry. <laughs> oh, yeah, outside of that. <laughs> outside of that, um... I search for books. I search for the good books. I order them what really appeals to me. I need to actually start diversifying my books. They're pretty focused on one thing, healthcare and business. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll send you some. I'll send you some good audio books yeah. for the car. Are you an okay. audio book or a tactile book kind of reader? I love medium. I love what medium shares, how yeah. short it yeah. is. It tells you. How long it's going to take What's to read, you know? Books, three. It still counts as reading. <laughs> it, does, it does. It does. It does. Why is Ali like, like <laughs> hiding you? <laughs> like, it's still literally. No, I do love medium as well. And medium, it like gives you those little cheats where it's like three minute read. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Okay, yeah. I got three Pass minutes for letting me know. <laughs> got everything covered in three minutes. Yeah. yeah. Audio books. Um, I used to love them, and I'd only use them. On a plane, so that, <laughs> it's the that has, for me. It's yeah. like, where did on I read plane. these things? <laughs> uh, <plane. laughs> on a plane. So yeah, when when I, when I would be on a plane with all that time, you know, I'd love to just you know sit back and listen to a book because there's nothing else to do. That's the only time I would use audio books, to be honest. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Okay, Doctor Boyne. The question we've all been waiting for. Dum dum dum. <laughs> Where can um, our audience find you online? <laughs> Is it the mdlink.com? How can we find you? It is, and I'm so glad you got that correct. <laughs> the you, the, w, the w, billboards w. are paying off. www.themdlink.com. <laughs> <laughs> T H E mdlink dot com. It's also free on the App Store, free on the Android Play Store. Ooh. MDLink Health app. The appointments are not free, but the app is yeah. free. Yeah, if you can't <laughs> find it, just Google it. MDLink Jamaica, you'll find it. MDLink Telemedicine. How can we find you on Instagram and Twitter? You can find like a TikTok, something a little outlandish. No or TikTok, <laughs> no, no TikTok. just. We're not, we're not talking in scrubs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Why yeah. is Alice oh, setting I, you up? I, I know, right? <laughs> I should. I feel attacked. Like, did you see my TikTok? <laughs> anyway, oh, I'm gonna go yeah. do some some research, <laughs> some research today. <laughs> All right. So you said Twitter yeah. was at the MD link and uh, Instagram. No, Twitter is MD link health. You see, you got me confused now. Instagram okay, Twitter is... MD link health and Instagram, Instagram the MD link. But you can Just also like find website. both of these both of these pages on the website. Correct. All right, love to see it. Che, we loved that you joined us after your extremely long day of work Very and in between day. your next long day of work. We really Indeed. can't thank you enough for sharing your experiences, insights, and entrepreneurial enthusiasm. And we always want to thank our audience for spending time with the Millennial Mike. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, to learn more about our mentorship giveaways and to find out how you can win a mentorship session with Dr. Bowen himself. Email us at bookings at themillennialmike.com if you have any questions. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell us who you want to hear from, what you want to learn about, and whether or not Millennial Mike content is hitting the mark. Okay, Che, we're going to need your help with this part. At the end, we say, I'm Ali. And Ali said, I'm Joe. I'm Joe. <laughs> and you'll say. What do I say? And this is. <laughs> no. This, ha- this I has been. You know the second part. <laughs> and this has, what is your name? I'm, I'm Che. Right. And then we'll say, and this has been. Okay. So we're going to do that. <laughs> All right. I'm Ali. I'm Joe. I'm Che. And, and this, this has been, been the Millennial Life. Millennial Life. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to join in. I joined in anyway. We liked it. We, we loved liked that. It. We loved that. We loved it. Thank you so much for being with us. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Millennial. Have a good Thank one. <laughs> Bye. <You> too. <laughs>